Okay, so for zero trust, what you have to have is some sort of decision about your asset devices and endpoint and users. So um, every user has to be assessed in, for their role and what type of device they're trying to connect from to what type of data in your environment. And zero trust is about making a decision that is risk-based about whether that access is allowed or not. Zero trust, um, it assumes the, the network of the room you're in, no one can be trusted. And there's a series of controls that live on the person or the asset that need to be satisfied before any interaction can occur. That's what zero trust means to me. I'm not sure there's much I can add, um, but yeah, it's, it's moving from that very traditional model where we say you're in a network, therefore we trust you, um, up a level on the OSI stack to actually interrogate specific devices, specific services, specific users to say, um, are you authorized to access this particular thing and can we identify you in a better way than just what your IP address is? What I have found is that most folks have very different um, perceptions of zero trust. And if I may use an analogy, I, you know, for maybe folks who are not super familiar with the term, it's more of like a fleeting trust, if you will. Zero trust doesn't mean that you're you know, never accepting anyone into your network or you're never accepting any type of access in. It just means that you have to constantly prove yourself. Right? Your access has constantly be vetted. It doesn't persist like it does in the old days. And that's because things can change, right? And you don't necessarily need longevity in this model.